Hey guys, what's up, Nick here. So I use GoZ a lot in my workflow to send objects back and forth between ZBrush and Cinema 4D. But since last year's release of Cinema 4D R20, a lot of plugins haven't been working anymore because of the new script language that is required. A couple of months ago, someone with the name Valkari shared a script on GitHub to make the exchange between the two programs work again. And you will find the link in the description below. But for me, it didn't really work well, especially when I wanted to work with several subtools, which is almost every time. <laughs> but now I finally figured out a way to use that script, and it also works with Cinema 4D R21, which just came out a month ago or so. So I wanted to share it with you guys because I didn't find a good explanation out there. So let's jump right into it. After you've installed the plugin, all you have to do is right-click somewhere on the interface, hit Customize Palettes, and then search for these two buttons called Export to ZBrush and import to ZBrush. Make sure there's somewhere where you like it, and then you have to save this interface. So it will be there on your last startup. So you can go to Windows, Customization, and save as Startup Layout. So the way this plugin works is that we control the export and import inside of Cinema 4D. And in ZBrush, we just tell ZBrush which kind of object we want to deal with. And I think this is like the confusing part, because when you hit the button inside of ZBrush, there is no feedback. There's nothing like really happening. And that's why I didn't get it for so long. So I just created this object, made it a symmetrical object, and I rename it now because the naming is really important, but I will get to that later. So we have to make sure that this object is a polygon object. And now we can hit the first button, which is export to ZBrush. And now we have this object inside of ZBrush and we have to append it to our scene. And now that we have appended it, we can just dynamesh it and uh, sculpt it really fast. So I sped up the process a little bit, just uh, did some very quick details here. And now we have to make sure that the name is the same. So actually when we appended it, ZBrush changed the name to new part one, but the name is new part. So now when I press go Z, it actually stores the ID of that object. And now I can press on import from ZBrush and it works just fine. And uh, the object got updated. So this is really cool. I just gonna hit render here very quick. that you can see that everything just worked well. So now of course it also works the other way round. So I can use an object that I have inside of Cinema in uh, ZBrush or oh, whoops. I have to make that <laughs> visible again. Okay, so let's quickly sculpt that. And then we'll use the same technique. So this time when we hit go Z, this object's ID will be stored and then we can import it into Cinema 4D. Now this object is called leaves, but in Cinema 4D it's called leaves as well, but with a, not with a capital letter. So how you write it is actually very, very important. And this is why it now has created a new object. So maybe this is what you want. Maybe you want ZBrush to cre create a new object inside of Cinema 4D, but when you want this object to be the same, then you have to make sure that the naming is correct. Yeah, so this was a really quick one. I hope it was helpful to you and see ya.